Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and we have such a wonderful treat for you this month for our Fat Quarter of the Month Club for March. So, have you ever been ready to entertain guests, maybe for Easter or St. Patrick's Day, and you just spill your Kool-Aid or your Guinness or something on your table runner? Well, you know what? We have a solution for this problem. You can just turn that baby right over, and it's good as new. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This month's project is reversible. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways that you could plan this project. You could cut strips of your fabric, but also strips of batting, and then kind of just stitch and flip until your little heart's content. Or you could stitch and flip on batting and then cover the backing with a solid piece. Or you could do the technique that we're doing this month. So basically, you're going to just do some cutting. You're going to find a feature fabric and fussy cut it. And then you're going to follow my very easy flippy dippy dip instructions. So let's get started. <laughs> so this month's fabric selections are kind of seasonal. You know, we got a bunny hopping down the bunny trail on March 31st. And, you know, it's spring. And in some cases, some of you I know have stared at a lot of snow. We thought we were getting an early summer. And then all of a sudden, bam, it we got a cold spell here. So maybe this brings a little cheer to you. Um, as always, you can find the Bernina Fat Quarter Club on our website at BerninaFNaperville.com under Fat Quarter Club. And then don't forget that each subscription is up to you. You're going to receive an email every month, but it's up to you whether you want to pay that invoice, because if you don't pay it, you won't get the Fat Quarter Club. And if you do, you will. And it's always six various fat quarters that are curated by our team at Bernina of Naperville. And this month, we've got some cute ones, kind of this orange and purple and bunny look and everything. So we hope you like it. And then always, if you need more fabric, we give you the links to the fabrics if you, if you want to make more. So this month's project is a reversible table runner. It's going to come in approximately 14 inches by 32 inches, but it's however you decide you're going to trim yours down at the end. And this technique lends itself really well to using all of the fat quarters and ultimately allows for a larger table runner if you need, because six fat quarters is about a yard and a half of fabric. But sometimes based on the size of the fat quarters, we don't always have a big piece for the back of a quilt if you want to make a long table runner. So hopefully you'll like this technique and the way that we designed it. So the supplies, any scrap of cotton, bamboo, poly, anything works for our batting. And like I said, we're doing about a 14 by 32 inch table runner. So a half a yard at 36 inch wide batting would suffice. I'm using a glue stick. It's a new product for us. It's a 505 glue stick. And the cool thing about this is it doesn't stain. It dries clear and it washes out. And in fact, you can even stitch through it when it is wet. So that's a key um, difference between this and other glue sticks. I'm also using a sew line marking pen and eraser. I use this for a couple different things in my sewing room, but I just wanted to point out that's the one I'm using this month. And later in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the binding tool. It is called the binding tool, and you'll see why it's kind of cool. And uh, thread, well, normally I match my top thread to my bottom thread, but this month we're going to use Mettler Silk Finish 50 weight cotton thread, and we're going to put like white in the needle, and we're going to put this straw color in the bobbin now. FYI, for visual purposes for some of these things, I'm actually stitching with green thread to show you what I did. So I'm not really using the green thread. I've just stitched the example with green thread so you can see exactly where the thread is. I like my Laura Star iron. And then this is a quilting crafting project. So a rotary cutter mat and rulers is crucial. And as far as your sewing machine stuff goes, we are piecing, stitching and flipping with our walking foot. We're also going to use our walking foot to attach our binding. And I am using the free motion number 24 open toe embroidery foot on my Q16 plus on the adjustable folding table later on, of course. So the cutting, it's pretty simple. 
we are, if you want to make it just like mine, this is how I did the cutting. So we have purple dots, an orange cross stitch, and this weather report in sunset. And for those, I cut eight one and a quarter inch by 10 inch strips and eight two and a quarter by 10 inch strips. There's green fabric that's not shown in this picture, but that's gonna be our binding. And you need five two and a half inch width strips, width of the fat quarter for that binding. And you're gonna sew those pieces together like you would any binding. I like to sew them together at a miter so that the seam is less bulky. And you're gonna prep that like you would for any kind of traditional quilt binding. And then I'll show you what we're doing with ours later. I did fussy cut the center fabric and that is the crafting magic moon with those little bunnies there. So it's one fussy cut seven inch square on the diagonal. And that really just allows us to get the most um, visuals from this really cute print that we used. And then also from this fabric, I want you to cut eight one and a quarter by 10 inch strips. And then there is a cream fabric that is got like this faint little green pattern on it. And I want you to cut another seven inch square of that because that's gonna go on the backside of our bunnies. So for preparation, basically you're gonna attach the walking foot to your machine. Don't use the guides. And then you'll see if you wanna know everything there is to know about the walking foot, please check out our walking foot video here. And I show you you know, how I like to use my foot with all of the different sole pieces and the guides and all of those things. And then of course, you're gonna thread the machine with that Mettler white on the top and the straw color on the bottom, and we're using stitch number one. So in preparation, you're gonna mark the center of your batting on the right side. And just so you know, the right side of the batting is the piece with the most holes where it looks like the needle went down in a hole or rather the less fuzzy in appearance and you're gonna mark that and then place your fussy cut bunny piece on the center. And make sure you know the diamond tips are in those vertical and center lines that you made on your batting. And we're gonna stitch this square into place with a slightly narrow than a quarter inch seam allowance. Then it's time to turn your work over and you're gonna place the cream seven inch square on the back so it covers the darker stitching line performed in that previous step. So we're gonna take this piece and place it so that the edges of this fabric cover the edges of the stitching. And, you know, try to center it like so, and get it, you know, as best as you can over all of those stitches. And you can use the 505 glue stick to prevent wiggling of the fabric on this. And then as far as stitching, let's talk about the order that we're gonna sew our strips on. So I stitched the strips to one side, then I emulated that pattern I created on the other side. So that's how I recommend you do it, just to keep a little bit of order to this. And when you're stitching a skinny strip, because our first stitch that goes next to our little bunnies is going to be a skinny orange cross stitch piece that's a one and a quarter inch strips, we're gonna stitch, each seam is gonna get stitched twice because we're going to line this up like this and we're gonna stitch it. Last time we did quite just a little bit under a quarter of an inch when we sewed this block on. Now we're gonna stitch this an actual quarter of an inch. Once we stitch that quarter of an inch, we're gonna turn this upside down and place our other piece. So let's just stitch this real quick. Then we're going to turn the work over and place a strip of that same fabric on the backside. And I like to think of placing that raw edge just shy of a quarter of an inch from the raw edge. And that way we're gonna judge over just a little bit so we can encapsulate that stitching from our previous step in the seam allowance. Now what I want you to see here is that that's my quarter of an inch and then now there's two lines here and those two lines are to make sure that we don't see any threads under like this. So we're going to press this open like press this over like this, and then we're gonna press this one over 
and I'm going to trim our pieces off here with some scissors. And then you're going to press this stuff over so everything lays nice and flat. We're going to add pieces onto this side and we can start with our first piece just like we did the other piece right down here like this using almost a quarter of an inch. So there it is. We're going to turn it over. We're going to add this piece like so. And if you needed, you could glue. Maybe in the beginning, gluing makes it a little bit easier for you. And you can do that. And I'm lining it up, leaving just a wee bit exposed, you know, or like so. This is not a precision competition. <laughs> and then we're going to stitch this into position. So now we have like this little right angle of orange fabric that's been stitched into place. And then once again, once you've stitched both the top and the back strip on, you're going to press those seams over and you are going to press them on each side. So press the top side, then turn it over and press the back side. And then one more thing about how we do this is when we're doing our wide strips, we want to make sure we do a wide strip here and then a wide strip here. Don't mix them up or your quilt might go a little cockeyed, okay? And then also, we're going to just line this guy up with all of the same principles, almost a quarter of an inch from here to here. Then we turn it over, add our another piece, and go a quarter. Now see here, it went a little wide. So how I figure that then is I just leave a little extra down here because we want to kind of try to straighten that up just a little bit because we don't want to see our dark green thread underneath. Remember, this is not an accuracy project. So it's been stitched here, it's been stitched here. We're gonna press, and then we'll just keep adding, adding, adding down the whole side of this piece and mirror on the other side what we're doing. So we finished our stitch and flip. And I know it might be a little clunky at first, but after you like get your groove on and everything, you might not even need glue as much because it kind of becomes a little bit more manageable as you go through that process. Um, but if you're new, you know, it's always best to just be very persnickety as you start and keep up so that you're more consistent. Now, another thing that I want to mention to you is this method is not necessarily going to be for people who enjoy precision quilting. Um, it's not meant to be like that. It's meant to be a fun, reversible project that builds confidence and you have something a little bit quickly done while you enjoy the process. And um, it's very scrappy, so you can cut your strips, as you can imagine, any width that you would want. You know, so you can experiment from um, wide strips to narrow strips to things like that. And also, though, when you do that, I do find we need a little bit of balance. So... When you do a skinny strip here, you do a skinny strip perpendicular. When you do a wider strip, then this side that goes perpendicular to it is also gonna be wide. So just make sure that you keep track that way. And then of course, whenever you put a skinny strip here, you're putting a skinny strip with its little partner underneath there. So hopefully, you know, that, that will help you out and help you um, discover if you like this technique for this kind of project. So as you were building this, you probably noticed that the little area here kind of feels a little scrunched up a bit. Well, that's because there's a lot of stitching to hold these different pieces of fabric down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Bernina number 24 foot, which you can see here. Now the 24 foot has been around for some time. It's got this little opening there so you can see where the needle's going. It's spring loaded. And this one, they make a version of this for your legacy machines, but also it fits just about every Bernina from the three series up through the 880. I'm gonna be using this on my Bernina Q16. Now the Q16 
has the Bernina stitch regulation lights right there in the bottom free arm part of the machine. We don't have that on our domestic Berninas, but we're going to be able to use this foot easily and still have regulation on our long arm. You might be curious about the Bernina stitch regulator, and that's also awesome for this project, and the Bernina stitch regulator has an open toe foot as well. So why don't you watch the Bernina stitch regulator video that we made, and it's on our YouTube channel, no problem finding it, but I have included a link in our presentation deck that you can find in the description of this video. So I've decided I, I have an isocord thread that sort of matches the color of my bunny outline. So my goal is to outline my bunnies, this sun, this little design, but maybe not all the details, and then some of the flowers and vines that you see around this piece in just the small square. So I'm going to, I have programmed the foot control on my Q16 to, if I press the heel part of my foot control, it's going to bring my thread up from the bottom and it's going to raise my presser foot up and do this. So watch, I'm pressing the heel part of my foot control and I'm going to start right in this little section right there. So there goes the needle up and down to pull my bobbin thread up here. Okay. And I'm just going to hold on to that for a second. And now I'm just going to follow along. Now also, my stitch length, I shortened it because this is kind of a lot of small things. So I'm doing 13 stitches per inch. And I'm going to slow down my knotting feature because I am in BSR mode one, where that means when I press on the foot control, it's going to, when I start sewing, the needle's going to rhythmically go up and down, and I don't want that to go too fast. I also have a feature where I can engage that heel tap or back kick to be an on-off button, kind of like the old dimmer switches on the cars from the 70s. So then I just press the heel tap, and now it's sewing to knot, but now as I stitch, it's regulating my stitches. So now I'm gonna go around my bunny, and like I said, I picked a thread that kind of matches the outline of this bunny on purpose and it's okay to stitch over because I don't care if this is more like thread painting. Okay, got that little tail. Now I'm doing the feet. Now this leg. And now there I am where I started and I did heel tap to stop my machine. So I've done that piece. Now I'm just going to travel over the bunny snout. And I'm going to get up here. And now I'm going to do this cloud. And then I'm just going to travel around this side to get back to the other side of the sun or moon or whatever it is. Okay, now here we go. And now it's time to do this bunny. And now I could stop here 
and just cut my thread and pick up. But there's such a little distance here between the bunny and this flower. I'm going to hop on over and do some quilting in here. And I'm not trying to get every last little detail of this flower, but just a little bit. And now I'm going to do the vine. And then this flower, just trying to take the path of least resistance, you know, as we enhance our work like this. And now we're going to do the butterfly. But once again, I'm not going in to all of the details of the butterfly. All right, so after the quilting is complete, oh my gosh, and it looks so cute, I have to admit, on both sides there like that. After that's complete, it's time to trim. And I have enough wiggle room here to cut a one and a half inches from the tip here out to the edge and one and a half inches from this tip out to the edge. So I'm gonna line, I know that this is a 45 degree inch line from my ruler, so I'm gonna, Line that up so I get my ruler going straight, but now I'm going to move this one and a half inches like so, and I'm just hoping to keep that 45 degree line parallel to one of my seams. So now let's give that a cut. And then I'm just going to line up my ruler here, make sure everything is still even. Perfect, and then at the ends, I'm just gonna trim to the edge of my fabric. Okay, so now you're just going to bind this with your favorite method, and I'm going to go ahead. I always like to stitch to the back side and then bring my binding around to the front, which I'm gonna do, but who can tell on a reversible item what is the front and what is the back? You can't, so who cares? So, so our table runner comes out to be about 11 and a half inches by 32 inches. So this is perfect for a small table or for a little um, cup of coffee, a floral arrangement, you know, something like that. It's time to bind, and I have reserved this fat quarter from our six fat quarters, and we're going to cut our strips by the width of the fat quarter. So that's the long way, the 22 inch way here like this. And we're gonna cut these at two and a half inches. You're gonna take your strips and you're gonna sew them together like making a miter. So you line them up like this and you're gonna stitch from corner to corner. And if you need to, you can draw a line. And then once all of our intersections are stitched together, and then we're going to attach it to either the back side or the front side of our table runner. But nobody's going to know because this thing is reversible, right? So I know that some of you struggle a little bit with doing bindings. And there is this tool. It's called the binding tool. Looks like this. There are older versions that are clear. And there's also a smaller version if you're doing like little placemats or something like that. But the way that this guy works is you are actually going to leave an opening that is 12 inches. So you can use your ruler, and I've got my marking pen here, and I'm just going to put this right in the middle. So this is going to be where I start sewing my binding, and this will be where I end sewing my bindings, because it has to be 12 inches. 12 inches, Gail, not 10 inches, okay? So right here and right here. Now, I'm also using this Duo Marking and Eraser Pen, so if you ever make a mistake with a mark, 
you can just use that little marker to take off a mistake mark. Okay, so we're going to put this aside for right now, and then we're going to take our binding that we just created, and we want to make a little bit longer binding here. So I'm going to start with a tail about like that, and I'm going to start sewing right here at this spot, which means that you can put a little pin so you can keep track of where you started. So I'm using my walking foot to sew this binding on, but I did switch machines. There is no conspiracy here. It's only because I'm finishing up this video here at the store rather than in my sewing room at home. Okay, so when I stitch my binding, and I've used a light color thread so that you can see what's happening here, I'm going to start right here on that spot that I've pinned, and then I'm aligning the raw edge up to the right edge of that right little grippy thing right there. So it's not quite a quarter of an inch. It's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to take out this pin and we're going to stitch. And now we do have not a total right angle here, but don't worry. Or we're just going to follow the guideline like it would be if it were a right angle. See that? It's not the perfect thing that we normally see, but we want to keep this raw edge even with this line that's right here. So we're going to fold that in like that, and we're going to fold this down like this. And then right before we get to that edge, about a quarter of an inch away or so, we're going to backpack, cut, and then this is a 90 degree angle. So you're going to be used to this one if you've ever done a binding on, a, on an actual square item before. So we're going to fold that up like so and bring this back down. And there's our little miter in there. Right, so now we're approaching our dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch, and there, there's that dot that I made. We're going to stop, reverse, and cut. All right, so it's time to revisit our intersection here. And I think a lot of quilters will agree with me that this is like something that baffles your mind when you try to join your two pieces here. So why I stressed starting with our 12 inch distances here is because this tool is designed for lining something up like this, and then you're gonna fold this over like so, and then you're going to mark based on that mark right here. So we line that up and do this, and I just do like a little line there as well. Then we're going to turn this around to do the other side, and we're gonna mark it on the other side as well, right at this line here. Once we do that, we can cut. And I recommend if you're new to this, you might draw a line and then cut. But basically, on this right side here, you're going to take your piece and you line this center line up like so, and you're going to cut. And you also are going to cut the little notch. Now we're going to take this piece, which now has to sit like this, and we're going to line this up with the line, but this time this one is going to sit like this. So that's our line that we drew 
from this registration mark, but you line tip A up to that and then you cut. Okay, then when you go to attach your pieces, you're gonna line that little tip that got cut off even with here, and then this tip that got cut off even with this, and stitch your quarter of an inch. Once your piece is joined, you're gonna just take it back to your machine and stitch that original seam allowance that you've been using to close up the, ex the open end. Okay, so our quilt little table runner came out great thanks to this guy. And now I'm gonna use that same 505 stick to just glue my piece around. Now I wanna show you, you can see how flat this is and everything. That's because once I finish stitching, I press everything from this side so it's nice and folded out and look at that beautiful miter there. Then I press it again to get my miters into position. So now that that's done, I use this guy to kind of hold everything into place for when I do my stitching because quite frankly, sometimes pinning or using the fabric clips will distort what I'm trying to do. So I wanted to show you how cute this looks after I pressed and folded and glued my piece. Now, this needs to be reversible. And, you know, you can stitch this on by machine. This way, we have many videos where the final piece is done by machine by either using your walking foot with the edge stitch sole, using the 10D, many, many ways to do this. But I want this table runner to be truly reversible. So quite frankly, I have to do a very rare thing and that's a binding by hand, just so I'm happy with how it turns out. So I'm gonna start right here on a corner, on a little mitered corner. And because I'm doing this by hand, it gives me an opportunity to really grab this little piece here and tug it in and make this miter look Perfect, so let's take that first stitch. And I just go across the street on one of these pieces. And I'm stitching, actually picking stitches from that lilac color. And now I'm going up into the binding, taking just a few threads of the binding tugging at it a little bit. Now I'm gonna come and grab this miter right there. And now I'm coming here, I'm gonna hold that with my thumb, grab it again. And you know, listen, for those of you wanting to enter show quilts and stuff, you might not wanna to listen to me, but if we look at this little miter here, a lot of places will want you to stitch that little piece this is not the place that wants you to do that, but if you wanted, you could sew that little seam down. And then I'm just gonna keep going all the way around my table runner, mitering my pieces and making sure everything looks pretty. And I know, I know you can see the dots where I stitched this. Yes, I stitched this by machine and then I ripped it out to do it by hand. It's okay to do that, but it's okay to leave it. I just made the decision to sew it by hand. So I'm gonna be doing this for a little bit. <laughs> All right, everybody, what do you think? Pretty easy, huh? And I think it's cute. And I have to tell you, if you're not an orange and purple or whatever person, I still think that you're gonna enjoy making this. And don't forget, you can always use these fabrics for other things too, right? And if you wanna know more about our Fat Quarter of the Month program, it's pretty easy. You just go to berninaofnaperville.com and, and you search Fat Quarter Club. There, you'll be able to see this month's project with the video, as well as some previous projects and an archive of 
a couple years worth of projects. And there's no commitment, even though you're signing up for a subscription, because we send you a monthly invoice. And if you don't pay the invoice for that month, well, you're not going to get the kit, but there's no obligation. No commitments here at Bernina of Naperville. And for other videos and tutorials and fun things, you can check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Happy St. Patrick's Day!